Today I wanted to give you a quick overview of Merch Jar. This is a tool that I recently started using. It helps you automate your Amazon ads optimizations, it helps you create new campaigns more easily and just generally keep track more easily of everything as well. In this video I'll just show you, walk you through the dashboard, tell you what different things there are to do and how it works because at first glance it is quite confusing. One thing to note here as well, Merch Jar is more of an advanced tool I would say for people who are spending hundreds of dollars a month who have got multiple campaigns running if you're completely new to ads if you've only got a few campaigns running you spend maybe i don't know 50 dollars a month this tool is probably not right for you but for all the people out there who are in higher tiers who are spending a lot on ads this is definitely a game changer because it makes life so much easier so here we are on the dashboard page of merch jar which essentially comes up with a lot of statistics by default i think it's set to the past um, 30 days and it shows you like the ACOS, um, the spend, everything in total. Uh, these are just some statistics. Um, it also, right here, this has to do with some of the automations that Merch Jar runs for you every single day, which I'll explain in a little while. And at the bottom, we've got an interesting section for products. So this has got all of the individual products that you're advertising in here. So for me, that's 113,000, wow. And the cool thing about this chart at the bottom of the sort of homepage or dashboard page is that you can very easily identify single products that are doing very terrible or single products that are doing really, really good and that you might want to increase the bid on. So for example, if we uh, order this right here by ACOS, click on this, as you can see, there's a couple here that are in the 100% <laughs> ACOS region, which is, Definitely terrible. Um, what's this one? Spend $47. It only got two orders. So the ASIN for this product is over here on the left. It's blurred out for you, but essentially what I would do now, and I've, I've already done this, but you can uh, look for this ASIN in your ad campaigns and either disable it or massively turn down the bid if you can. So um, that's definitely a cool feature to quickly filter through all of the individual products, even the ones in lottery campaigns, all that sort of stuff. Um, you've all got them right here in one field. Next up, the automation sections. So this is one of the biggest time savers in my opinion, and one of the most powerful things about Merge Jar in general. So promotions, the way this works essentially is, uh, let me just open one of these up. Um, I, I might make a separate video about how to actually create these promotions. It's a bit hard to show uh, when everything is blurred. Um, but I'm pretty sure Cameron, the founder of Merch Jar, he's also got some videos on his channel as, uh, showing how to create these promotions. And what they do is um, essentially you've got multiple ad campaigns right here within this promotion. And in this case, I've got two auto campaigns, just automatic targeting, obviously targeting lots of different products and search terms. And then I've also got two different uh, campaigns right here that are for keyword targeting and product targeting so manual targets right and what this promotion is doing it is promoting keywords and product targets from these auto campaigns right here that's what these check marks mean is promoting them from here and automatically moving them into the manual targeted ad groups. So the keywords go into exact match and the products that it finds from the auto campaigns go into obviously product targeting right here, which is a separate ad campaign. And at the same time, I am negating those keywords and products in the auto campaigns. So the idea with this concept is you've got auto campaigns that are essentially farming for new keywords and, uh, and product targets that you can then specifically target with control over the bid and everything in a manually targeted campaign because the auto campaigns, you've got one bid that applies to everything, to every single search term. So the control is definitely less there. Auto campaigns are great, but this way you can essentially harvest good keywords, good products to target for your designs and then have more control over them with manually target ad campaigns. And you can def you can change some settings right here in terms of what co qualifies as a search term to promote in a sense. And I've just set this to, if it gets one order, 
and has an A cost below 70%, then that search term gets moved forward. So you can, you can change this to whatever you want. You can increase it right here and we can change the A cost. There's some more options as well, like clicks and that stuff which you don't have to configure. So that's it in terms of promotions. It's, it sounds a bit confusing at first, but once you've set up a couple of these, it makes a lot of sense and it saves you a ton of time because going into the search term reports and selecting all of your targets for manual campaigns is really boring, really tedious. So this is definitely the way to go. Besides promotions, we've also got recipes and this essentially manages what you would be doing most of the time when you're in the original ads console, which is just changing bids up and down. That is probably what most of us spend the most time doing. And what these recipes do, essentially, they change the bids for you based on various different factors and triggers. If you're new to Merch Jar, this section will be empty. You won't have any recipes in here, but you can download some default recipes, the same ones that I've got right here, from mergejar.com. I might leave a link to that in the description. If you want to get those, um, you can create your own recipe. If you can code, it all works with code, or you can import recipe right here with this button. And I, I'm not going to explain all of these, but um, I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Let's begin with the low performers keywords recipe right here, which all of these run once per day and you can change how often they run at the bottom if you wanted to, but by default, they're set to once per day. And this specific recipe, you can scroll through this and all of the gray text um, helps explain how the recipe works. And it checks if there's any targets with zero orders, but over 15 clicks. I think the default threshold might be 20 and I've changed it right here. That's the cool thing. You can customize these um, to your liking as well. So if there's a target with over 15 clicks, but zero orders over the lifetime, then what this recipe will do is set the state to paused right here. It will turn them off for you automatically, saving you from wasting a lot of money. Because what's happened to me a lot before is I'll, I won't have checked my ads for a week or two. I'll go into them and notice one campaign is doing terrible and it's literally just one specific target that is getting a ton of clicks, like 100 clicks with one order, zero orders. And there's some more triggers here as well. So there's multiple triggers within one recipe most of the time. And the next one is if you're checking out the lifetime, there's only one order, but 50 clicks or more. So that is um, another good reason to turn off a target. Same goes with last 90 days. If there's uh, one order or more and over 60 clicks, once again, if that trigger is met, then this recipe sets the state to paused. And this is for all of your campaigns. They get checked every single day um, by this recipe. So if you go back to all of the other ones, they all sort of build on top of each other. Most of them increase and decrease bids, depending on whether you have a high or a low ACOS within your specific targets. So if we check out one of these ones right here, let's do high ACOS targets here. The change in bid is 4%, a decrease, and it's checked once per day. And what does this actually do? So at the start, it says this recipe is used to lower bids on high A cost targets and segments targets by order volume, low, moderate, and high. So if we look at the actual triggers, over the last 30 days, I've been messing around with these a bit. Over the last 30 days, if the orders are one or more and your A cost is over 24%, then the, uh, the bid gets decreased. They also add right here, set this two to 5% above your target A cost. So you have to decide what A cost do you want to have? Do you want it to be 20, 25? Do you want it to be 15? You know, whatever you want your A cost to actually turn out at the end of the day, that is what you want to adjust these settings to. So in my case, I'm aiming for a 20% A cost roughly, meaning if it goes over 24, we're going to start reducing bids and there's some more triggers once again i won't go over all of these over the last 14 days um, if there's more than three orders 24 percent this is for moderate order volume so you've got various different sections here that you can play around with you don't have to change these that's a good thing the default recipes they're already set up for you um, and you don't have to make any changes and you don't have to understand code either it's all explained very very easily right here within these but once you've made a change obviously just press save and um, if you are into coding, you can also create your own ones. Now, at first sight, this does look quite confusing. It did look confusing to me because I'm not into coding, not a fan of it, but um, these 
These just do the work for you. You don't even have to understand the code itself. All you need to know is that these check all of your campaigns on a daily basis and increase and decrease bids to help make sure that the ACoS is lower. That way you don't have to click through them every single day and make changes yourself and checking different time ranges, which is very difficult, very time consuming, especially if you go into like the tens, twenties, maybe hundreds of ad campaigns um, that you're running at the same time. So that's it for the automation side of things. If we collapse this now, we also have the ad manager, which essentially is a collection of the different levels for each ad. So we've got portfolios, campaigns, placements, ad groups, uh, each individual ad, the keywords and targets, they're all compiled or combined into one long list rather than being segmented by campaigns. If we click into campaigns, for example, right here, one thing that I wanted to mention in this section is that you have these smart bid options over here. So what do smart bids do? First of all, you don't have to have these turned on for the recipes to work. Recipes are separate to smart bids. And I believe Cameron said to me that smart bids were just their functionality before recipes became a thing. And they're similar in the sense that they adjust your bids. However, they're not as customizable and not as advanced. You can run them simultaneously with your recipes and they will sort of build on top of each other. And the way to configure them is if you head into the settings tab right here, there is a specific setting to change how your smart bids actually adjust your bids. Besides that, you can also do things like uh, select all of your campaigns right here and set a target ACoS with the bulk actions. Um, I've got mine set to 20% and that will then um, sort of give you different highlight for the ACoS numbers over here. They'll go yellow if they're over your target they go green if they're underneath and if they're really really far off then they will go red as you can see right here and you also get a target cost per click which i thought was interesting this i'm pretty sure you don't see within within the normal amazon console and it essentially just calculates what your cost per click would be or should be to meet your actual target a cost with which is really interesting and gives you a good idea what to set your bids if you are setting them individually or what they might be in future to run at a profit or at your desired a cost number. Let's move on to the ad groups because in this section um, you've got some good functionality as well. For example, you could change the bids of all of your ad groups in one go, which I find really handy because I f if I see that I'm spending a ton of money over the past week, say, and uh, my, my A cost is not really doing very well, I want to stop spending as much, then I would just come in here, I would select all of my campaigns or, or most of them, go to bulk actions and then change the default bid. And you can quickly this way, bring all of your bids down by say 20% if you wanted to. That should signif significantly slow down your spending. And yeah, save you a lot of time by doing that in bulk. You can also uh, order this by A cost and take a look at obviously the high ACOS ad groups and make adjustments to them. Yeah, besides that, I mean, you can change the columns. That's always part of these pages. You can uh, enable and disable different statistics right here within these uh, tables. So that's quite handy. You don't need to see all of these. Also, if you look at the bulk actions again, you can also add ASINs right here, bulk to multiple campaigns at once, which is really handy. You could just paste them into here. So if you've got a spreadsheet with a ton of ASINs, then you can just copy and paste and submit down here to add them to one or multiple ad groups in one go. And it's not limited to a thousand ASINs. That is how you can create lottery campaigns more quickly through Merch Jar. I will probably make a separate video about that as well because it's really handy. It's saved me a ton of time. I created a lottery campaign with I think 100,000 ASINs in it which the traditional way that would have taken a few hours at least but he only took five minutes so yeah that's definitely really handy besides that there's not too much more to show if we click into ads now now it gets down to the to the nitty-gritty we've got 148,000 individual ads running uh, or i have i should say and once again, you can do bulk actions uh, by setting the state to something else right here. You can order this by different things like ACOS, by clicks, um, by the spend, 
and check whether there's any individual ads that are wasting a lot of money or that have a really low a cost that you might want to fiddle around with so i hope that gives you a bit of an overview uh, those are some of the most important things that i've learned so far i'm still fairly new to it i've been using merch jar for a few weeks now i'm sure there's lots of things i still have to learn but i hope if you're new to the tool or if you're thinking about investing in the tool if you're in a higher tier or if you spend a lot of money on ads then this is giving you an idea as to what this tool can help you with, how it can save you time. I might make some tutorials in the future about Merge Jar if there is some interest. And yeah, hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped you out. This tool is definitely helping me out. If you want to check it out yourself, there's a link in the description. I will also link uh, Cameron's YouTube channel because he's got a lot of tutorials dedicated to this tool. If you want to learn more about ads by an absolute expert and a Merch by Amazon top seller, then make sure to check out this podcast next where I interviewed Cameron who shares a lot of valuable insights about ads.